Well, hi. Today is day 99 and day 100 of my journey of 100 days of surrender. Holy mother. So I wrote a list of what I've transformed through. And I was nervous about doing this video because I don't want to sound showboaty or braggy, but I just want to show you what can happen when you decide to do the dive. And then I thought, okay, I'm going to share what I have transformed in 100 days. And then I'm going to give you some stepping stones on how you can do that. So I want you to get a pen and paper. So pause it, get a pen and paper, and then come back to this. I'm going to give you a lot of, a lot of tools here. So as I was sitting and writing out what I've been looking at, all my love letters on my inspiration wall, I've been looking at the difference in my life. I've been looking at all four bodies, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual bodies. What changes have happened? Why have they happened? How have they happened? Let's get into it. Holy shit. Here's what I didn't realize. I have a program called Divine Alignment. I love this program. This is the bones of what we do here at Diamond or Men Diamond No Mentoring. And I have a certification program that's going to be launched. I've been quietly doing it for the certification program now for two years um, and launching people into being the highest level mentors. And with that comes like, what is your actual soul purpose? I, I'm psychic. I can do that in a book of life session, right? I can offer that information to you. I can tell you exactly what it is. So what is your soul purpose? How the fuck do you get there? What do you do with it? Because my background is in ex like high C level. So I work with CEOs, C VP of operations, um, founders of large companies, helping them define their message to the world, as well as build the business model, as well as market the business model, as well as launch the business model and be successful. So that's my corporate background from a long time ago, blended with a couple of other things. But anyway, um, so I've been doing this program for two years very quietly because I didn't think I could take on that load. I have had a round of divine alignment clients all graduate. So all of a sudden I'm opening up to, oh, whoa, I've got space. I wasn't even aware of that until I sat there with doing my um, calendar for May. I was like, holy shit. So I was like, all right, let's bring this program to the world now instead of quietly doing it. So I'm going to be launching that really soon with it. Like I'm going to sound super braggy, but I'm telling you, I will make you the best fucking mentor in the world and I will make you successful and you will be in sole purpose following integrity. That is what my purpose is on this planet. So I love that. And I'm going to, I'm just going to, this is part of my hundred days transformation. It's getting so fucking clear on what my purpose is on this planet and really allowing myself to step into that. So don't stay tuned for that. Anyway, um, with my, my transformation over hundred days, that was super clear to me. Like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going for it. I'm going to do retreats more retreats specifically just for this. I will mentor the mentors and I will make as many beautiful souls step into purpose so that we can change together a million lives. Cause that's my, that's my big goal is a million lives being changed. I don't want to change a whole million myself. So let's do it together. So big transformation in that area, getting crystal, crystal clear on soul purpose and my next level of soul purpose. Ooh. So good. That in itself, I would have been just fine with, but no, that's not where it ended. Let's go down the list. So the next thing that I was like, holy shit, massive transformation with my perception of love and my ability to be in the vibration of love, my ability to receive true love and communicate true love and offer authentic, unfiltered, bold, raw love. I did not realize that I had a limiting blockage in regards to my fear of sustainability that was impacting the non-success of my relationship with my twin flame. So as you guys know, we had to take a little bit of time apart for us each to process. And we came slamming back together about six weeks ago. I'm not really sure. Um, and I've never experienced a love like this. We are both on the exact same page, going in the exact same direction. We are both so unfiltered in our authentic self with communication about our discomforts, our fears, our requirements, our needs, our desires. And it's awesome. I like didn't even know love could be this good. And this is like not a fresh relationship. Like we've been together for two and a half years and we know we're well out of that honeymoon stage. Let me tell you. 
but here we are just feeling more empowered and in love and holding hands in this journey together. And it's amazing. So big ass transformation with that. Um, I shared my messaging with the world, understanding my alignment with wealth, unlimited wealth that came through because I was moving. This is the thing. We've all got beliefs that are limiting our ability to step forward in this world. We're energetic beings. So you got 40 trillion some cells. Each one of those cells has universal flow as well as your belief structure all slammed together in one beautiful hot mess all through the whole body. So getting really clear on the beliefs that are limiting you and going in and doing that work, which I'm going to talk about in a second, transforms the vibration that you are the universal law of vibration. We are vibrational beings. Everything is a vibration and like attracts like the law of attraction, uh, they come together. So whatever your vibration is with all of your belief structure, I didn't realize that I had limiting beliefs in like, it was the biggest one was my fear of sustainability, which was impacting my relationship with love and my relationship with money. Once I rewrote that vibration, that belief creating a different vibration, it exploded like a giant waterfall just pouring down on me. Incredible. Um, so I had a huge transition there. Another really cool one that I didn't anticipate at all. Over the hundred days, my strength has gone up like times three with what I can do with my endurance, my what I'm doing with weight lifting weights, um, my energy like throughout the day, my vitality. And then my body was like, well, we don't need these 22 pounds. We'll just drop those without like diet or restriction or anything. So fucking cool. Did not anticipate that. I've been the same weight for ah, a long time. Like a good, since I've been home from Costa Rica. So I'd say four years now, the same weight um, without like, I love my body. That's another hard lesson is learning to love your body, but I've already done that one. And all of a sudden it was like, no, we're ready to shine. It's okay. We can let go of this. And it's still actively losing weight. So that was really freaking awesome. And then what I've opened up to receiving. So I am receiving a lot more love across the board. I'm getting love letters that have so much more depth and meaning to them instead of like, oh, I really like this content. That was really great. Thank you. I actually was getting like, I'm getting letters from people that I met or crossed paths with 20 years ago that I had forgotten about. And they reach out and they're like, do you remember me? I'm like, oh my God. Um, so beautiful love letters. There's way more affection in my life. Didn't even know I liked affection that much. And now it's like, it's really unlimited and it's super cool. And I love it so much. Um, I feel very valued in my purpose something I want for everyone in this world. I want you to feel so valued and so needed on this planet. That's a really delicate, beautiful feeling. Um, finances, obviously, because of the wealth thing, my visions and my channeling in my meditations have become so much more powerful. Um, it's just, I've learned how to create space for everything and the balance that I have in my life now. I can lean into being a workaholic pretty easy always been a thing but I have such a beautiful balance in my life right now between time with my loved ones um time with my soul family even though that's not as frequent um but it's every couple of months which is great um more time with myself more time for creating program structures creating like there's just more of everything it's beautiful so I thought going into this hundred days that I was just going to feel stronger at the end. Everything changed. There's not one corner in my life that didn't change. So what I discovered while I was writing this all down is like, well, I actually just did my own divine alignment program for 15 weeks. <laughs> and the transformation has been unfucking real. And I'm so glad I did this journey. So let's break down the tools. I just got a quick list of things to think about. Okay. So get your pen out. Do the dive. Number one, do the dive. Figure out what those limiting beliefs are. That is, to me, it's like a treasure hunt. I love it. That's what divine alignment is. I sit, 
and we dive through what's oh, limiting you. It is a beautiful journey. It can be a little uncomfortable. You guys saw my discomfort going through quite a bit of it, repressed old memories coming up, having to move through things that I didn't even realize that I'd gone through, like, oh, it was sticky. Um, had some heavy moments, but the, on the other side of it is absolute freedom. So do the dive, figure out what your limiting beliefs are. You're going to figure that out in two fashions. You are going to scan your physical body. Where is there disharmony? Where is there pain? Where is there chronic anything? So digestive issues, throat issues, uh, whatever. Dive through. Your body is telling you what you need to emotionally pour your love into. So each body part has um, a cross connection to an emotional pattern. That emotional pattern, if you go into the emotion, you'll be able to figure out where the limiting belief is, pull it to the surface, rewrite it heal, change your vibration, change your outcome. The second piece is your inner child work. Do your fucking inner child work. I'm going to launch a program really soon, a pre-recorded program, because I've gotten a lot of requests for it. The why do we heal inner child and exactly how do we do that? So that'll be coming out really, really soon. And it'll be very, very, very feasible. Let me tell you, very low priced because I just want to get it out. Um, so your inner child what we don't realize is, so first, let me back up to your belief structure is solidified in and around the age eight. Then we start to navigate off of that vibration, those beliefs, that vibration, that manifestation. Success. So when we go into inner child, we can uncover the most authentic version of you, which is going to be about six-year-old you, um, but I'll get into more of that later. Your most authentic you approaches every situation in absolute trust and wonderment and curiosity without any preconceived notions about what it could be. We are not in protection mode at that point. We are navigate into protection mode after the age of eight. So that's why healing your limiting beliefs is so essential and they reside mostly in that inner child space. Now there's going to be layers. Inner child doesn't have to just be baby version of you. I have done that work. I have dove so deep into that little girl. Oh my God, she is my best friend, my everything, my world. All your inner child desires is to be heard, to be valued, to be witnessed, to be loved, to be safe, right? So when we do that, you're going to transform everything. Predominantly for me over the last month, it has been 12-year-old me to 33-year-old me that I've been working with. So all of this healing work isn't just the inner child. It's all past versions of you, even yesterday, you sometimes. And what you want to do is you want to journal, let them have a voice. So when you find a memory, when you find something uncomfortable, step one, let them ego it out on paper, dump it out. I call it an ego dump, put it all out on paper. Then it doesn't belong to you anymore. You can put it down, make it messy, make it raw, like swear, whatever that younger version, give permission of, for them to say everything that they want. Let them release it to be heard. They didn't have permission to share their discomfort, their pain, or any of those things. So give it to them. Once that's out, you close the book, you put it away. Done. It doesn't belong to us anymore. Then you get to start the rewriting process. Um, you might have to revisit it a couple of times. That's okay. Absolutely okay. Um, you want, when you are your most authentic self, you're just going to have this ability to purely align. It's so gorgeous. Oh, I love it. Um, okay. So we want them to be heard. The other thing, and I did a whole video on this and it's named inner child. I want you to go into a picture and connect into that babe. Remember them and imagine that they're hanging out with you. Everything that you say in here, they are hearing. So watch your smack talk. That's going to start to change a lot of things for you. Also going to bring a lot of awareness into how much you're putting yourself down. Your ego doesn't know the difference between imagination and so-called reality. So if you're imagining that baby hanging out with you, your ego is going to behave a lot better and you're going to catch it and be able to change that story. Any memories that surface, any memories, even if it's from a year ago, moving forward, never participate in the memory. Don't go back into it. Don't play in it. Don't rewrite it. Don't, oh, I should have said, could have said, would have said it. Don't do that. Instead, what you're going to do is pause that memory right here, right now. You walks into that memory to the past version of you and says, hey, let's go. This isn't happening anymore. This is not happening anymore. You are with me. You are protected. You are safe. Leave the memory and then sit and talk with that past version of yourself. What are you truly experiencing? 
then you're going to find that limiting belief and you can rewrite it. So there's that piece. Okay. Next step. Ready? Have a vision. If you don't have a desired vision, you don't have to have it crystal clear. You don't have to have all the details, just a direction. Okay. And with that direction, it's going to be that or better. I am really great at this. I got the whole vision. I know what my future house looks like. I know like what the driveway feels like. I've got it all down. Create the vision to the most, um, like as alive as you can get that. Remembering that your mind cannot conceive the impossible. If you can conceive it, you will actually experience it if you allow yourself to experience it. So the more you daydream, the more you're going to receive. But with that, you have to have goals. In the five steps of creation that I teach in the Ascension Retreat, there's also five action items, okay? So the five stepping stones to creating anything in your world is your belief creates a vibration. That vibration is your emotion. That emotion creates your perception. That perception becomes your outcome. So whatever the belief is will always be the outcome. And it goes through those five steps in order to become your outcome. One of the action items associated with this is 5% action. So once we have a perception, we want to take 5% action towards the outcome. 5%, that's it. So when you have a goal, if you do not have a plan, then you just have a wish. You do not have a goal. So what is 5% action? So set it either for, I don't like to do it every day because I don't think that's sustainable. 5% action each week towards that goal. So let's say you're wanting a new home. 5% action could look like starting to look at properties. Where do you want to go? That's 5% action. That's the exciting part. 5% action could be decluttering one room in your house and getting rid of things that you don't want to bring on the move. 5% action could be packing up dishes that you don't use and putting them in boxes and getting ready for the move. It could be any one of those things or many other things, but you just want to take 5% action. Okay, next step, understand your comfort zone. Right here is your comfort zone. We cannot sustain right here. We know this is the upper limit, the top edge, the top bar of your comfort zone. You like to play here. And we go here and go, oh, and then we go comfortable again. And then we're like, oh, this is great and not sustainable. And we go comfortable again. Understand what the top layer of your comfort zone is and what is holding you back from that comfort zone going up here. Mine was a fear about shining others. Real stupid childhood shit. There it was on display when I dove into that. I was like, oh. So once I understood that, I could begin rewriting it, which allowed my comfort zone to lift up. We do not want to go from, let's say you want to start working out, never worked out, and all of a sudden you're going to the gym five days a week, that's way out of the comfort zone. You're going to fail. It's going to happen. You're going to sabotage yourself. So instead, working out one day a week. And once we're there, working out two days a week. And once we're there, working out three days a week, comfort zone goes up. So I want you to understand the edge of your comfort zone. Understanding the 12 universal laws is absolutely essential. 100% essential. Most people are only using the law of attraction and it blows my mind. Why would you use one of 12 laws and expect amazing change in your life? Don't understand it. So there's 12. That's also in the Ascension Retreat. Um, so I'm going to do a 30 days of Ascension, Awakening, Evolution um, series after I'm done this series. So I'm going to start that next week. We're going to do 30 days of Ascension and I'm going to share some of those tips and I will definitely talk about the 12 universal laws. There's a lot of people who think there's like 20 laws or not. I've been teaching it 22 years before it was cool. 12 universal laws. There's 12. So we've all got our opinions. I'm just going to share those ones because those are the ones that I know that work for 22 years. Um, okay. Kind of spicy today, eh? I'm like fuck this. My rumor. Um, we want to listen to our compass, not your ego. I asked you a question a little while ago. Are you listening to your intuition or are you listening to fear? We don't even know when we're listening to fear sometimes because it's normal. You have your compass, which is your soul. You have your navigation system, the voice, the Siri of the situation, the teller, the storyteller, the ego. We have to quiet this to understand this. this is why your meditation is so important. I am a huge fan of stillness and pacing meditations. Those are the ones that I see the most impact with, with all my students, um, but do whatever feels right for you. And it doesn't have to be formal. You just want to create space for your compass to move through you, to move through the ego self. 
The compass is also attached to the law of inspired action, one of the 12 universal laws. So when we create this space, the law of inspired action on what your actual next step or the actual piece that you've been missing, that floats through you so fast and it's so easy. We don't have to complicate it. So you've got to understand listening to the compass. Next step that I have is embodying trust. That's not easy. I have a ridiculous story with that one that I won't bore you with right now, but it took me a long time to embody trust. I don't think I fully embodied it until about three years ago. Um, and when I did, everything changed in my life. Everything changed in a day, in a full day, everything. Um, so that one's really important. Next step, you've got to believe that you deserve it. Like you really got to believe that you deserve it. The dream that you have, you would not have been given if you weren't meant to fulfill it. You've got to believe that you deserve it, that it's for you and that the way you share it with the world is required and the way you love is required to be reciprocated. We are here for evolution. So I want you to take this point seriously. We're here for evolution. We're here to experience evolving into higher self. That's what humans do. That's what we do. We evolve into our highest version of ourselves. We got to allow it, right? So in that, it's an actual requirement for you to experience unconditional love. If, you're, if your whole purpose is to evolve to your higher self, it is a requirement for you to then experience unconditional love. It is a requirement for you to understand and transition and experience a fully healthy, vital body. It is in your requirement for you to evolve to experience financial ease. So these things are there for you. That's what we came here to experience. We're just real good at blocking them because we've got this stupid shit that happened to us when we were younger that says, oh no, we can't possibly. And it's hard, but it's not. All you have to do is surrender into what's really going on with me. A hundred days, that's how many things I've changed. That's how many things, like in a hundred days, 15 weeks, I fully changed my entire life and my life was already fucking amazing. You can change your life. You can take the reins. You have full control. You are deserving and worthy of having everything that your imagination can muster up. So it's time to believe in that. It's time to do it. So these are the main steps that I went through. Two more to add into it. I already talked about inspired action. And the last one, which I am not good at, but I did it all 100 days, get help. You're not meant to do this alone. I've done the majority of my journey alone. And my fear of being truly deeply embarrassed didn't allow me to be vulnerable. I spent this hundred days being vulnerable and leaning into my soul family. Get help. That means lean into those that you um, really resonate with. That means being vulnerable in your journal. It means being vulnerable in the mirror. It means being vulnerable with your inner child. It means discovering, going on a treasure hunt of what are the blockages. And if that doesn't work for you, work with one of or myself or one of my other mentors here. That's what we do. That's our purpose is to help you propel. I will be transitioning really, really soon into only working with launching mentors, um, which will involve a little bit of the divine alignment program. Absolutely. Cause it's essential. And my other mentors are going to be taking over divine alignment. So I want to see what, what are you going to do? get help. Don't do it alone. There's a bazillion tools out there. There's lots of YouTube videos. There's lots of TikToks. There's all these things. Just make sure it resonates with you. Don't believe everything you hear because that's what's going to fuck you up. I went through a whole phase when I was being, um, so this would have been back in 2000 and five. 2005, when I started telling people that I channeled the Galactic Federations and the Galactic Councils. And then it was like, oh, you do? You got you to check out this one and this one and this one. And so I went through a whole year of absorbing a bunch of other channelers out there, um, mostly Palladians or the Galactic Federation of Light, which is, anyway, won't get into that right now. Um, and it threw me off course. It 
threw me way off because they were all about these false promises and hope. And humanity does require hope when we're being stupid. Do we ever need hope when we're dead asleep and not looking and, and being curious? Oh yeah, we need fucking hope. But that is not how I roll. That's not how I function. I'm not going to give you false hope on anything. I think it's bullshit because the vibration of hope is I have a 50-50 chance at making it or not making it. Why would I offer you that? I think that's so such bad energy. Instead, I'm like, no, if you want it, here's how you fucking do it. Align with it. Um, so anyways, take what resonates. You really tap into it. And if there's a slight, ooh, let that piece go. Don't hold on to it. Don't believe everything that you hear. We're all different versions of star seeds. We're all here for a different level of our ascension or evolution. And we're all at different levels. Like we are all a pixels in the rainbow. No one's just blue or red or yellow or orange. We are pixels and together we create that rainbow. So it's important that we understand each other, but someone who's pixels way over here and you're over here or vice versa, you're not going to have the same path on this planet. And you're not going to be here to teach the same thing or in the same fashion. So always check in in what resonates mostly with you. But the biggest thing, surrender, find out what those limiting beliefs are. Everything changes. There we go. 100 days. Thank you for being on this journey with me. I love and value all of you. I hope, trust you as I say the word hope, I trust that you are going to dive into your experience and go after I want for you. I want for you. I've had the most incredible experience over the last hundred days. Don't shy away from it. Dive into it. Go for it. You deserve it. And on the other side of discomfort comes a lot of fucking beauty, man. So never stop being brave, bold, and raw. And thank you for all of the love letters, the comments, the sharing on this crazy hundred days. And I will be starting next week with 30 days of Ascension where I'll be bringing some of the information from the retreat forward and offering as many tools as I can. All right. Thank you. I love you. Catch you around. Mwah.